Hello, and thank you for joining today's session on automating scheduling using booking page. In today's session, we will be going over how to create a booking page, uh, as well as define all of the settings and go over some best practices to ensure you get the best experience out of your booking page. Before scheduling with Doodle, you will want to make sure that you complete three activities in your account settings. First, you'll want to make sure that your de default time zone is set to where you are in the world. Second, please make sure that you've connected your calendar or calendars to your Doodle account as it is required for using Booking Page. Finally, if you are going to use a video conferencing application such as Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Cisco WebEx, you'll want to make sure that you have those accounts connected to your Doodle account as well. It only takes about two minutes to complete all of these activities in your account settings. So uh, just take a moment to take care of that, and then I'll show you how to use Booking Page. Finally, please note that today's session will be recorded. All right, let's take a look at Booking Page. So first, you will log in to your Doodle account, and you're brought to your Doodle dashboard, which is where we are right now. You can create a booking page in one of two ways. First, you can either click here where it says create a new booking page directly from your Doodle dashboard, or you can click this create button and from the subscreen, select create booking page. When you create a booking page, you will want to enter in to creating the booking page with intention because it's designed either for you know, a specific event such as uh, booking first consultations or uh, final interviews, or it could be for a more general purpose like, you know, have coffee with me. So everything kind of trickles down from your intention. So for this example, instead of picking something overly specific, I'm going to create something that's pretty general. So I'm going to, let's pretend that I'm a CEO and my goal is to have kind of an open door policy. So I want to create a booking page for everyone in my organization that they can use to book time with me. So I will call this booking page coffee with the CEO. So as you can see, the title of your booking page informs the tail of your booking page link. You don't need to keep the, the tail of the URL exactly as it is uh, you know, married to the title. If you have a particularly long title, that would then create a particularly long booking page link. So you can kind of tidy it up by editing this tail here. So let's say that we want to change it down to coffee with the CEO. So a little bit shorter, a little bit more elegant. Next, you can offer a description. Uh, the description field is optional. Um, for a more specific meeting, like a final interview, you might want to provide particular or specific instructions for the uh, applicant. Um, and in this case, since it's kind of general, more what I want to do here is simply show where the description will populate on uh, the invitation. So for now, I will just put the word placeholder. Next, you have location. So it says optional, and you know it is optional, but I would wager that meetings tend to take place somewhere. So you have a few different ways that you can define with a location. You can be kind of general. So you can say, you know, it's the CEO. You can simply say my office and everyone in the organization might know where your office is and that would be sufficient. But if someone doesn't know where your office is or if you need to be more specific, then you can instead put in a full address. And what I'm going to show here is that I put in a segment of an address and this is the street address of uh, Doodle's office in Berlin. And you can see here it says search for call for 41 on Google Maps. So this field is tethered to the Google Maps database, which means that you can search for uh, addresses as they're stated in that database. So I'm going to search for this in Google Maps. And it gives two options. So there's call for 41 either in Berlin or in Nuremberg. So I'm going to select Berlin because that's accurate. And you can see that with the little segment of information that I provided, that the, the database has been queried and has extrapolated the full address. Finally, you have video conferencing. So if you're going to meet virtually instead, you would initiate this toggle until it shows green and this new menu appears. And 
you can select from your connected uh, video conferencing applications. In my case, I've connected a Google Calendar to my account, which also automatically adds Google Meet. So I can select that. And here it says video links and details will be created and sent after the event is booked. So when someone books a time on my booking page, uh, the calendar invite attachment that will be included will uh, feature the specific link to uh, the session. So you won't have to manually create anything. Before I move on, do we have any questions about the, the basic invite uh, and uh, details for booking page? Let me check the chat. Okay, we have uh, we have two questions. The first question is, can you have both a physical and virtual location? Yes. So I'll just reapply this, and you can have here we have the physical location for people who might be physically attending, and then a um, a, a video link in case they can't attend in person, and instead we'll have a virtual meeting. So you can do both. The second question is, is there a limit to the description field? Yes. So. Let me just kind of replace this. I'm going to keep this as a just a physical location. So for the description, um, this field is limited to 3,000 characters, which is, you know, it's a pretty substantial paragraph. Um, I would I would posit that there's more of a practical limitation than a uh, an actual limitation, because you want to focus on pretty essential information here. Um, I would say that the you know when you finally state all of the essential information, that will probably be probably be well less than three thousand characters. But the direct answer is three thousand characters. That's the limit on the description field. All right, and that is it for questions for now. Cool. All right, so I'm going to move on then. So <clears throat> with booking page, what you're doing is you are you've connected your calendar and now you're going to apply some rules by which your calendar will be scanned. And based on those rules, the output will be the times that you are available. So let's set up some rules for this booking page. So the first thing that you want to set is how long this meeting will be. The default is 60 minutes, and there's also other defaults of 15, 30, and 120 minutes. Or you can do a custom duration, whereby you would click on custom, select the unit, either minute or hours, and then select how long you want it to be. And for this example, I'm going to do 30 minutes. And then we have, what is the date range for the booking horizon? So the default is no limit, um, but that might not be ideal. You can, uh, instead of no limit, and so for no limit, what does that mean? That means someone can book time tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, next decade. Um, but we can we can kind of rein that in. So you can choose one week in the future, two, three, onward in different increments up to a year. So if I choose three weeks into the future, then that would mean from today up to three weeks from now, someone can book time. And then, you know, uh, say it's April 1st, from April 1st, then three weeks forward to April 21st, people could book time onward and onward. It's a rolling three week window from present day up to three weeks. Alternately, you can select a custom date range, whereby you would select the start date and then the end date for when people can book time with you. For this example, I will, I will select three weeks into the future. I can see we have some questions that have been popping up in the chat. Let me see what we got here. All right, so first question is, can you have two different meeting durations in one booking page? No, um, you must commit to a singular uh, booking uh, duration for or, or event duration for your booking page. Um, the other question, what happens to my booking page after the end date when using the custom date range feature? Okay, so if you use the custom date range feature, feature and you select, you know, uh, March 1st to March 31st, on April 1st, the, the booking page will still exist. It doesn't just disappear or get deleted, uh, but if someone books or uh, clicks on your booking page link, then the screen will show that you're no longer uh, taking meetings using this booking page and to contact the organizer directly. All right, one more question. What is the shortest and longest meeting that you can have? Okay, so from custom, you know, you can you can select you know custom times. There is a, a boundary on it. Um, the shortest meeting you can have is five minutes. 
and the longest meeting you can have is eight hours. So anywhere in that range. I set it back to 30 minutes. And it looks like that's all the questions for now. So thank you for those questions. Those are good. All right. So we selected our duration. We selected our booking horizon. Let's take a look at when participants can book. So what you're looking at here is the, the defaults. And the default is that people, or rather, the, the days and times that will be scanned are Monday to Friday from 9 to 5. So kind of like the, the typical work week. It is, of course, mutable, however. So uh, let's say that on Monday, uh, you want to only meet in the morning. So we can switch the end time from 5 p.m. to noon. So now we're only going to offer spaces between 9 and noon on Monday. And then let's say that Tuesday is kind of like a sacred day for you. You don't take meetings. You're just nose to the grindstone doing work. All you have to do to eliminate a day outright is click the bin, and then it goes away. Ooh, got a question. Can you pick two separate ranges of time on the same day? Yes. So to do that, let's use Wednesday as an example. Let's say on Wednesday that you want to have availability from 9 to noon, but then also from 2 to 4. So to do that, there are three steps, and you want to follow them in this exact order each time. So step number one is on the day that you want to modify, create the early time band. So we're going to do 9 to noon. And then click on Add Hours and isolate the day that you wish to modify. So we're, we're affecting Wednesday, so I'm going to isolate Wednesday. And then the final step is to set the later time span. So I said 2 to 4, I believe. Let's take this to 2 p.m. and change this to 4 p.m. <clears throat> and then click Save. So you can see here, we've got 9 to noon and then also 2 to 4 on Wednesdays. So uh, no time can be booked between uh, 12 and 2, and then uh, nothing 4 p.m. 4 p.m. and onward. Um, so I think that answers your question. OK, do we have any other questions? Not for now. OK, beautiful. All right, so let's say that this is how you want to set up your calendar. You've taken care of all of your, um, your day preferences and your time ranges. Let's take a look at some power settings. Power settings are really cool because the way I look at it is it gives you more control over your calendar while also giving more opportunity to meet the people that you want to meet with. So kind of a good uh, balance of uh, control and agency. So. Let's go through these. Time zone. Most people won't have a reason to affect their time zone. The, the time zone that's indicated is the, the default time zone that I mentioned that you want to take care of in your account settings. Um, the reason you would need to change this is if you're creating a booking page to schedule meetings for when you are in a different time zone from where you usually are. So if you travel a lot for business and it takes you through different time zones, you might have a reason to um, modify this. Otherwise, it's probably uh, best just to leave it as is. Booking intervals. OK, so booking intervals, it says same as event duration. And you'll recall that our event duration is 30 minutes. <clears throat> so let's take an example of Friday here. Let's say that on Friday, for, for this Friday, there's nothing on my calendar. We're keeping it nice and simple. A booking interval that is same as event duration would mean that meetings would be offered from 9 to 9.30, 9.30 to 10, 10 to 10.30, onward and onward, back to back, kind of like train cars. Whereas if I were to change this to, say, 15 minutes, then that would mean that it would be 9 to 9.30, 9.15 to 9.45, 9.30 to 10, 9.45 to uh, 10.15, on and on. So basically, a 30-minute meeting will be offered every 15 minutes. So that, in, in a sense, that doubles the, the options available to the people that will be booking time with you. So it gives them more flexibility, uh, but it keeps the meeting duration to 30 minutes. We got a question. OK, so OK, we had an eagle-eyed observer. The question is, can you explain when someone would pick a five-minute booking interval? So you saw this right here. So if you were to pick a five-minute booking interval with the current setting of 30 minutes, then you would have options from 9 to 9.30, 9.05 to 9.35, 9.10 to 9.40, 9.15 to 9.45. It's a lot of, of different 
you know, options with a fairly minuscule difference between them. Uh, and I wouldn't advise that for a meeting as long as 30 minutes. Where picking five minutes might make sense, however, is if your meeting duration is also correspondingly very brief. So if the meeting will only last 10 minutes, then a five minute booking interval would double the options. And actually that's kind of like, that's my rule uh, where my booking interval, when I create my own booking pages, is I set my booking interval to half as long as the meeting itself. So the meeting is 30 minutes, so I would choose 15 minutes. Basically what I wanna do is I wanna double the amount of options available to the person I'm trying to book time with. All right, no other questions for now, perfect. Okay, so we've set our booking interval. Let's take a look at buffer times. So the default is no buffer time. And for my part, I'm fine with being back to back. So if someone, uh, if we have no buffer time and someone booked nine to 9.30, someone else could book 9.30 to 10. And that's fine if that's if that's what you're fine with. But if we were to apply, say, a 15 minute uh, buffer time, then if someone books 9 to 9.30, then the next available slot would be 9.45 to 10.15, protecting the 15 minutes from 9.30 to 9.45. So that once your 9 to 9.30 meeting ends, you have 15 minutes to either review notes or just get up and move around, grab a cup of tea, whatever it is you need to do. So. Um, if you like to have a buffer time, find the buffer time that makes sense for you. But if you're like me, we'll keep it at no buffer time. Now, one thing that I am uh, really big on is minimum advance notice. The, the default is no minimum notice. So for me right now, it's 3.57 p.m. Uh, that means that someone ostensibly could book time at 4 p.m., giving me you know less than three minutes now to prepare for a meeting. And I don't like that. So. I set mine to one day so that when I sit down in my chair in the start of the day, I can look at my calendar and I know what my meetings are for that day. Um, but find the find the one that works well for you. If you're good on short notice or no notice, you, you know we have these you know shorter durations here. But if you're anything like me, we have you know much longer durations from one day up to one week that you can select. I will select one day. Finally, let's take a look at maximum bookings per day for this page. So I'm gonna set it to three. What does that mean? So that, let's look at Friday once again um, and pretend that there's nothing on my calendar. You know, person one books nine to 9.30, person two, 9.30 to 10, person three, 10 to 10.30. Now I've reached three people. That means it's gonna turn off bookings for Friday on uh, for the rest of the day. So even if I have plenty of availability in my calendar, it is going to stop taking bookings after three bookings have been uh, booked. This means that you can you know put your your booking page out into the wild, and you don't have to worry about your whole day getting chewed up you know thirty minutes at a time by people booking time for for every gap that you have. So you know whatever your maximum booking per day uh, for the page works well for either the page's design or intention, then select that. For this example, I will select three. All right, so that is power settings. And all right, no more questions about that. Let's move on then to connected calendars. So like I mentioned at the beginning, you wanna connect your calendar to your Doodle account and it's, it's required for booking page based on how it works. It needs to have a calendar to scan to see when you're available. So I've connected one calendar. You could add more calendars. So if I were to click add calendar, uh, if you connected multiple calendars to your Doodle account, you could uh, check that box. And then what that would accomplish is it would check both of those calendars uh, and, and run the rules that we've applied here against both of those calendars. Therefore, uh, whatever times are being offered to your participants meet all of the availability requirements uh, for both calendars. Now, the other thing you can do is, um, I mean, let me toggle screens here. So this is my Google Calendar. And this is my this blue one is my primary calendar. Down here, I have subscribed to another calendar, the, the doodle team participant at gmail.com calendar. So when I initiate that, I can now see those appointments against my own. Theirs are in this uh, you know bold pink and I have mine still in blue. Going back to Doodle, I can also see that calendar here. So if I were to check that one, 
um, and click save, then it will scan that calendar as well as my calendar for, for mutual availability. So if I'm using this booking page, for example, to um, for, for interviewing, and it's important that one of my colleagues also be at that interview, if I've subscribed to their calendar, I can have that scan for avail availability as well as my own calendar, uh, ensuring that whatever's offered will be available for both of us. Um, for this, I'm going to simply uncheck it, and I'm only going to have my calendar scanned for availability. All right, so let's double check to see if we have any questions. No questions yet. All right, reminders for participants. So. Um, you can check this box, and if someone has booked a, a meeting with you more than 24 hours in advance, exactly 24 hours before the meeting, that person will receive uh, an email from Doodle reminding them that they have a session in exactly 24 hours with you. Um, ooh, we got a question. Is the automatic reminder email editable? No, uh, the the email that is sent it's just a it's a standard template email uh, reminding them to uh, not forget the meeting that they have booked with you. Um, there's not much to it, um, and it itself is it's not editable. But that's a good question. All right, so for this example, I'm going to not use the enable booking reminder option, and then finally we have custom invite fields. Custom invite fields. Are, are very helpful for, for any booking page, honestly, whether it's generic or it's kind of specific. So if you are um, using the example of like a physical therapist who's using this booking page to book appointments with existing um, uh, clients, then a sensible question might be, um, you know, what are we working on for, for your upcoming therapy session? Whereas if it is a more general page, like the one I'm building, which is very generic, just coffee with a CEO, a, uh, you might be encouraged to ask, you know, what is this meeting about? Like, you don't, you don't want to get ambushed by anything. So I'm going to put that. What would you like to discuss? All right. So this question is either optional or you can check this box and make it a required question. For this booking page, I'm going to require that people answer this question when they book time. OK, so we have our questions. We set up our calendars. We've decided not to do reminders. We have our power settings. We know when our calendar is being scanned. We've chosen our booking horizon and meeting duration. And finally, all of our basic invite information. We are now ready to create this booking page. So to do that, on the bottom of the screen, you click the blue button that says Create Booking Page. And you're brought to this summary screen. And here we can see the title of the event, that you're the organizer that lasts 30 minutes at this location in this time zone. And we see here placeholder. If the description were longer, it would take up more space. You can share your, uh, your booking page in one of two ways. So you can either simply copy the link, and when you click this button, that pastes it, or rather it, it copies it to your uh, clipboard, and you can paste it into an email or into Slack, and you can send it to whoever you want uh, to book time with. Alternately, you can email it with Doodle, and you'd click here, and you would enter in their email address here, and we have this, uh, this text box down here, which is editable, and it has a pre-scripted uh, uh, message that you can change if you would like. So once you're happy with the email or emails and you're happy with the message, you would click email invite. For this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy the link and pretend I emailed it off to uh, participants and they click on that link. So what I would like to do is I'm going to open an incognito window and show the participant experience. Okay, so we see a fairly familiar setup. We have uh, the basic information of the invitation here on the left, and we have placeholder. If it were longer, it would take up this space, and if it were longer than this space, there would be a, an arrow that you could click to expand to show the rest of the description. And then here we have the times that are on offer. So you'll remember that you know I eliminated Tuesdays. I put that in the bin, so you'll see that no Tuesdays are available. And Based on the rules that I set and the times that I have on my calendar, the next available date is on the 20th. 
And as I click through these options, you'll see that the times on this side change. And the reason it's changing is because Doodle is scanning my calendar and seeing which availabilities I have for 30 minutes that meet all of those rules that I set up. So I'm going to select 10 p.m. or sorry, 10 a.m. on uh, March 30th. I will put in my name for this. I'm just going to say that my name is Booking Page Participant. And then I'll put in a placeholder email. And then what would I discuss? Uh, I'll call it Q2 Projects. So once they've answered these three questions, the participant clicks Book It. And when they click Book It, they will be brought to their own summary screen. But that also initiates some, uh, some events. So first, it will automatically put that booking onto your connected calendar. And it will send two emails. One will be sent to you, and it will feature a calendar invite attachment. So just in case something happens to your calendar, or if you need to pass that invitation on to someone else who will be joining you, then you can just forward that email with that uh, calendar invite attachment. And the person who booked the event with you will also receive an email with the calendar invite attachment, including all of the details about how long it is and its location. So a couple last things I want to show before we conclude today's session. Um, when you're building your booking page, you can look at an incognito window if you would like, like I did, to preview it. Or right here within the Doodle environment, you can click on Preview. And that will show you a preview screen, just like I showed you with the incognito window. And you can click through. And this is helpful because it's a kind of a, a, a gut check. You can see, are the times that are populating on the right-hand side um, what you were hoping for based on the rules and the criteria that you set when you were building up the page? If it's not looking like how you would like, like if it's too many sessions or if it's too few sessions, you can close the preview window and click on edit booking page and go back and modify your settings as you deem necessary. And then finally, I'm going to go to the Doodle dashboard. And here you can see on this column is a library of booking pages. So uh, this is where you can manage all of your booking pages uh, straight from your dashboard. So you'll see that this one is kind of a light green and this one is a gray. The reason for that is that the gray one has been disabled. So if ever you need to disable a booking page link, you can do that. Um, all you need to do is click disable link and it will move it down uh, to the bottom of the list and mark it gray so it's visually bracing. You can also click enable to re-enable that booking page. Um, finally, you can click on copy link and quickly grab that uh, booking page link to email or Slack to someone. And if, if ever you need to just fully delete a booking page, all you have to do is select delete and then confirm your selection. All right, that is my presentation. I'm going to double check to see if I've missed any questions. And it looks like, looks like we're good. All right, well, I want to thank you all for joining me today. Uh, I hope that booking page uh, is going to solve your, your scheduling problem and uh, gets you in front of the people that you want to meet sooner and easier. All right. You take care, everyone. Bye-bye.